What's up guys, Matt here. It's great to see you today. Um, I am coming at you with a, an informative video um, about how to get started on eBay. How do you go from having no knowledge of eBay and not knowing how to sell um, to, uh, to where I'm at today to a top rated seller. So how did, I basically wanna share with you guys um, you know, the journey that I took to get where I'm at today. And I, I wanna go step by step uh, for you guys um, and how I got there. So basically um, this video will be for beginners to eBay, but I'm gonna try to throw in some things. Uh, if, you, you know, if you're a seasoned eBay um, seller, you know, most of this stuff you're gonna know, but it may be a thing or two here that you didn't think about or, or uh, you know, maybe you haven't employed, you know, tried to use in your own business. Um, so there may be something for everybody, but really this is going to take the beginner, uh, you know, hopefully step by step. I'm sure I forgot some stuff, but step by step, uh, how we get to, you know, how, how do you build up on eBay to become a seller? So, you know, to become a top rated seller. So this kind of came about, um, because of someone asked a question in one of the Facebook groups I'm a part of a reselling Facebook group, and they were new you know a new ebay seller they had like one feedback they had like seven listings and they were frustrated because they weren't making sales they didn't know what to do How, you know they were just kind of like i haven't sold anything in a while i don't know what what's going on or how i fix this and i remember being there i remember being new not having any feedback not making any sales and then you know how did i how did i figure out how to do this so um, I guess a little backstory about myself. Um, I have been reselling for about four and a half months now, so not long at all. So I'm still very new myself. So uh, I've been selling for four and a half months. Um, before I was a reseller, I worked in hospitals, uh, you know, had other jobs. I'd never really sold anything online before. I'd never sold anything online. I barely really even purchased anything online. So um, kind of how I got started, you know, how did, well, then how did you become a reseller? Um, was watching YouTube videos. Um, I was collecting video game stuff and I was watching YouTube videos of other video game collectors and how they, how they built their collections through garage sailing and thrift stores and stuff. But then in those videos, they were saying things like, oh, I, I'm buying this. It's not a video game. I'm buying this to resell on eBay to make money to buy more video game stuff. So and it just kind of dawned on me like, wow, I think I can do that. So Basically, I'm going to take you guys um, through how to set up an eBay. Very simple, you know, kind of, you know, what you'll want to do setting up your eBay, what steps you want to take um, through, um, you know, getting started. You're going to have zero feedback. So you're going to, how, how do you build feedback? Um, I'm going to tell you about the different sourcing options that are, that are out there for you. And I've kind of put the sourcing options in um, rank, kind of like from my favorite to my least favorite or less successful um, and then we'll talk about you know well you know where do you do your research how do you find all this information and then I'll even talk to you guys about shipping which in my opinion is the hardest part of eBay so uh, we'll talk about shipping you know and what's next after that so I've got some notes here um, got a little notepad here to kind of talk to you guys about you know where to go with this thing um, and, and I'm sure that I will forget things um, I tried to incorporate everything that I could remember that, you know, that, it, that I did all the steps that I took, but let's start with number one. You're setting up a new eBay account and really I want you guys, if you're new to eBay, like I, so I set up my own, a uh, new eBay account when I started, I did have an old eBay account. Like I said, I bought a few things, um, on there before, maybe one or two things, but I didn't want to use that account. I wanted to have my own eBay account. I want you to think of eBay as a business. This is your business. I want it to be its own separate entity. So what do we mean by this? We want to make a new account, create a new account, um, make up a name for this account. Think of it as a business. This is your business. So think of a business name. Um, there are plenty of successful resellers who just have, you know, regular old names that, you know, maybe it's part of their name or something, you know, it doesn't have a, a specialized branded name. But when I was thinking about this, I was thinking, okay, I want to do this for the long haul. I want to be, you know, I want to be a full-time reseller. I want to be doing this for a long time. Now, I will say that all of these tips 
um, are geared more towards full-time reselling, but you can definitely employ these as a part-time reseller. And, and when those points come up, I'll kind of tell you if you're doing this part-time, then you may want to do this instead. But anyway, back to my original point, you want to make this, you know, this is your business. You want to, you want to treat this as your business. It's its own separate entity. So we're going to make up a new eBay. We're going to create an eBay account uh, like this one right here. The name of, of my eBay store is MAT Retail. Where did this name come from? I'm terrible at creating names, by the way. Absolutely terrible. But MAT is just my initials. Retail just being, you know, we're selling stuff. So re retailing stuff. That's the way I was thinking of it as, you know, so I made up a brand new eBay account. I made a new PayPal account. I did have another PayPal account, but I didn't want that to be linked. So when you make an eBay account, you have to link a, a PayPal account. Um, to your eBay account, that's how you get paid. So you'll want to make a new e uh, PayPal account and you'll want to create a new email for all this. So this is going to be your business email. This is the email that will be attached to your your eBay page if you make uh, accounts on other pages, that I'll, some other stuff that I'm going to show you guys later. You're going to you're gonna have to put in an email. Keep it separate from your personal stuff. This is your eBay, you know, this is your business account. If there's ever any questions when it comes to tax time or any other things, everything can be found in its own place because it's all separate from, you know, all your personal stuff that's going on. So we want to we want to start a new eBay account. We want to start a new PayPal account. We want to start a new email. And what this does is it allows you to brand, you know, again, this is your business. So this is your brand. You're gonna want to, you know, you're gonna want logos like, you know, for instance, you're, if at some point you're gonna become, you know, you're gonna want an eBay store. When you get an eBay store, you have a place to put logos and stuff. So you're gonna want to think, be thinking ahead about this stuff. You may think, why would I ever get a store? I never thought I would get a store, but things progress so rapidly that I needed a store. I had to have those extra listings. So, you know. I had to come up with logos so this way if you have your own name you know you're gonna like I said you're gonna be able to brand this stuff you're gonna be able to to, to create social media accounts there are lots of resellers that have Facebook groups Instagram pages Twitter accounts all based around their their eBay business and that, and that's it's just another way to get your name out there again this is your business and this is another way to get your name out there to make sales to generate money for yourself so, you know, so this is going to be, you know, like I said, the, your name, you're going to be able to brand it. You're going to be able to make social media pages and things like that. These are all things that you will eventually do. If you become a successful eBay uh, reseller, you know, these are all things that you may want to think about doing, making social media accounts and really making a brand out of it. And the other thing you're going to want to do when you're setting up your eBay is you're going to want to download the eBay app. So on your phone download the ebay app become very familiar with how it runs how it works because it will be a very integral part of running ebay a lot of your work will be done here on desktop but also a lot of your work will be done on the ebay app you'll use your ebay app a lot especially when you're outsourcing so it's a very important download the ebay app now let's go to the second point we're getting started so we've created our account we've created our PayPal we've linked all that stuff together we've made an email we linked the email that with everything now we have this brand new eBay account with zero feedback it's very very difficult to sell with a zero feedback and especially a new account because people can see when you created your account see you have zero feedback buyers are going to be a little weary of buying from you because you have no feedback you know they may be thinking that you're trying to scam them or something so it's very important that you build up your feedback so how are we gonna how do we go about building up our feedback the magic number is 10 when you get 10 feedback you get a little gold star next to your your feedback scores you can see uh, right here I've got 154 with this little I don't know, blue star but when you get 10 you get this little gold star that's kind of the magic number that's when people start as buyers they start to feel a little bit more comfortable with you because you've got some feedback, you know, you've got that star. That's what they see. They don't, you know, they won't necessarily click on your feedback. Some of them, some of them will, some of them won't and like look through your feedback. So how are we going to build up our account from zero feedback to 10? Great question. Now, the way I did it and I saw all this information. So any information I give you is basically stuff that I've found here on YouTube. YouTube is going to be a very integral part of your business as well. Um, and one of these things, basically, I, I searched up a video of how to build feedback score. And one of them said, basically, take $10, invest 10 this is a $10 investment into your business. 
take $10, go on eBay, and buy cheap stuff. One of the ways to build feedback, the way I did it, I bought stickers. There's, you can buy stickers, stamps, pencils, you know, just office supplies, you know, just buy, you know, buy 10 cheap items, a dollar or less. So for instance, I, I think I actually did purchase this sticker. This is a Prince decal sticker. It is 99 cents. It's free shipping. So you're going to pay a dollar for this. You're going to get free shipping. It doesn't even have to be anything, you know, I don't know what I did with these stickers. I think I probably just threw them away or donated them, but you know, order cheap stuff. And what this will do is that will, you know, when you when you purchase it, the seller will give you feedback because you're, you know, you've paid for the item, you know, so you'll get buyer feedback. But Matt, we're sellers. What are you talking about buyer feedback? So all your feedback is lumped together, buyer and seller, into your feedback number. So someone will just see that you have ten feedback with a gold star, unless they click into your account and go further with it, which most buyers do not. They'll just see it as 10 feedback, but really they don't know that it's 10 buyer feedback. So you can, like I said, buy cheap stuff on eBay, stickers, stamps, pencils, just anything you can find cheap. Take $10, buy 10 items, get 10 feedback. Now make sure when you purchase things like, I think I messed this up when I started, I bought like 10 stickers, but I had bought stickers from the same buyer, so they only left me one feedback. So make sure that you're purchasing from 10 different buyers or 10 bit different sellers. So, like I said, so we're going to purchase things. The other thing you can do, so say you don't want to, I don't really want to spend, you know, I don't want to buy 10 stickers. I don't want to waste my money, you know, on that stuff. Christmas is coming up. Do your Christmas shopping on eBay. Build your feedback that way. You're going to have to buy this stuff anyway for Christmas. Buy it off eBay. Most likely, you'll probably get it cheaper anyway. But you can build up feedback that way. And then the other thing that we that I did was I bought household items um, as well, and I bet so I purchased my my pet food through eBay. Um, I purchased you know like shampoo, you know deodorant. I just purchase household items through eBay to build up my feedback. So this way, you're gonna need this stuff anyway. Most likely, you're probably gonna get cheaper. I know I get my pet food cheaper on eBay than going to PetSmart and buying it. So these are just some of the ideas that you can do. The magic number is ten. Whatever way you can get to ten, get to ten. <clears throat> now we've built up that that feedback to 10 we have the gold star we're ready to start selling where do we get items to sell Matt I don't have a whole lot of money to put into eBay I can't go and spend a bunch of money on eBay I saw another again another video I saw on YouTube a great way to start selling on eBay go around your house find things that you can sell basically this video said I guarantee you have things sitting around your house right now that will sell on eBay that you're not using things in your closet you know I think the, I'll show you the very first thing that I sold on eBay was a bobblehead so I got this bobblehead me and my wife went to a baseball game uh, we both got a bobblehead for going to the game so I had two I had one displayed and I had one that was just sitting on a shelf collecting dust I said I can sell that so I posted that online like I said got this from the, the game it was my admission I sold it for $30. That was my very first eBay sale. That came from just around my house. You probably have shoes that you don't wear, clothes, video games you don't play anymore. You know, whatever it may be, you have stuff in your house that you can list on eBay. Just go find stuff. Go find stuff around your house, list it on eBay. Those will probably be your first sales. So now, we've started our eBay account, we've got our new account up, we've made our PayPal, we've made our, e e you know, we've created a new email. We've taken our account from zero feedback. We've built it up to 10 feedback, which is really where you the ball starts rolling free. Once you get to 10, most of the time, buyers feel most buyers feel pretty comfortable buying from somebody. They see that gold star. That's what it is. They see the 10 feedback. They see the gold star. Okay, this guy has some feedback. You know, I'm, I feel okay purchasing from this guy. Now, you found some things around your house. You've made a couple of sales off of things around your house. Now you've got a little extra money. Where are you going to get other things to put onto eBay? Where are you going to source what we call sourcing? Where are you going to buy items to put on eBay? Now, these are the places that I purchase items from, and I've kind of ranked them from my favorite to my least favorite. Now, again, all of this, this is just my personal opinion. Some of these sourcing areas may be better for you than others. It depends on your area. That's very important. Your area may have more 
you know, thrift stores than garage sales. You may not have a heavy, you know, a big garage sale area, but maybe you have a lot of thrift stores around. So your your list may be different. But the number one place that the most consistent place I find items to sell on eBay are thrift stores. Okay? That's the most consistent place. Not the best place, I would say, but the most consistent. Every day I go to thrift stores. Every single day. So what are the keys to going to thrift stores? Plan a route. You know, go on a go on a map. Type in Google thrift stores near me. See everything that pops up. Plan a route every single day. <clears throat> now this is for uh, full time sellers, but as a part time seller, you can do this too. Every single day, I go to the same thrift stores, and it's anywhere between six and ten thrift stores a day. That's how many I hit every single day. So my day starts at eight thirty in the morning. I go to the post office, drop off my packages from the day before, and I like I said, I have a loop. Where I hit six six thrift stores, and if I want to expand that loop, I can hit four more. So every day I'm hitting between six, the same six to ten thrift stores. That may seem like a lot, but there are days when I go to ten thrift stores and I don't buy a single item all day. I buy nothing. There are some days I go to ten thrift stores and I will buy, every place I go to I find something. It's it's you know it just depends on the day, depends on what's there. So plan a route. Um, you know, consistently hit those stores every day, hit those stores, go to the same stores. And the most important thing is when you're at the stores, be friendly with the workers, make relationships. This will go a long way for you. What do I mean? So you're going to get basically like inside information from the workers. If you go every single day, you're saying good morning, you're saying good afternoon, you're talking to them because they're going to be out there working, you know, talk to them, become friendly with them, make those relationships because it'll definitely pay dividends um, to you because, you know, they'll give you some, if, oh, I, you know, I've, we've got some stuff in the back. I've had them tell me, oh, we've got some stuff in the back that's, you know, we have Legos in the back. We have video, you know, they mostly know that I go to look for video games. Oh, we got video games in the back. They're pricing them. They're going to be out soon. They've told me things like this before. When you take items to the register that don't have price tags on them, I've gotten good prices because I was friendly with the cashiers. They know me. They know I come in every day all for you six bucks for this okay cool you know so they'll, they'll give you you know they'll give you good prices because you're there all the time they've had me telling you oh you know you support the store so much you know we really appreciate it you know for you two dollars you know what i mean something like that so be friendly with them make the relationships because that will pay off in the end so that was the most con thrift stores are definitely the most consistent because i'm going to them every day that's you know, as much as you want to, if you want to go seven days a week, they're open every day. So that could be your thing. The second place that, that I get, that I get, uh, source, you know, items from to sell on eBay is garage sales. That's a, a very big, it has the potential to be the biggest area for you to buy things that, you know, you may get the most stuff from garage sales. Garage sales run Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So you have four days really of garage sales and it's again important to plan your route for garage sales the night before you you know if it's friday you know thursday night you're going to go out on friday or if it's friday night you're going out on saturday plan your route there are a few apps that i use for garage sale finding a one app the most important app that you know again you're going to download the ebay app the other app you need to download yard sale treasure map app very important it's basically it's a free app you'll download it you put in your zip code and it'll basically pop pop up all the garage sales that are in your area within you know a certain mile radius you can click on the the different points you can see what's for sale there see how they've you know what items they're listing you can plan your route on the the yard sale treasure map app the other thing i use is yardsalefinder.com it's a website i use this on my phone i use this on my desktop they will also have uh, other um, thrift, um, other garage sales listed on there some that may not be on the treasure map app uh, and vice versa, so that you're going to get two different places where you can get, you're going to get different yard sales um, on there. So it's important to plan your route. It's important to use those two tools to plan that route. And when you go to yard sales, don't be afraid to haggle prices. Um, when you're out there, you know, if you're you know at a garage sale, if you're at a thrift store, you're going to be on your eBay app. You're going to be looking things up. You're going to be scanning things. Um, you see the price. Don't be afraid to ask for less. You know, if they've got $5 on there, you know, and, you know, the item may be, you know, you can sell it on eBay for 15 or 20 Buying it for 5 is not great. 
but if you can get it for two bucks and sell it for twenty, yeah, that's pretty good. You know, so if they've got five on there, say, hey, will you take two for this? Don't be afraid. The, the worst they can say is, nah, I want to get five out of that. I say, okay, and then you just put it down and you move on, right? So don't be afraid to haggle. For me, this was very, a very hard thing to do. You know, and there's still lots of times when I just pay the price when getting it for a better price is probably, you know, is obviously better. But sometimes I'm just like, ah, I don't feel like haggling. I'll just pay the price. But don't be afraid to haggle. It was a, a skill that I had to learn you know, to kind of open myself up to talking to people and, and haggling and things. So don't be afraid to haggle while you're out of the garage shells because it will save you a lot of money. You know, just those, you know, just those few words asking if they've got five, you ask for, you know, hey, we take two for it. You've, if they say yes, you've saved yourself $3. That goes a long way. So <clears throat> the third most important, the third place that I get items to sell on eBay is online. Online is very important as well. It's probably my third favorite place to source from. Uh, where am I talking about? Local auction sites. Local auction sites. Uh, here in Cincinnati, there's two local auctions, online auction sites, where basically you bid on items. They have local pickup places, so you when you win the items, you just drive there. I make that part of my route. I'll, you know, if it's pickup day at the local auction, I'll hit my six thrift stores and expand my loop to hit the auction site place, pick up my stuff, and then maybe hit a few other thrift stores on the way home. So, look, look up... Google in your local auction sites in your area. Uh, like I said, Cincinnati has two that I know of, two that I use. So look up local auction sites. The other places, Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, OfferUp, LetGo. Be trolling these areas every single day. You should be looking at these because there are opportunities to source from local locally. Facebook Book Marketplace is probably the biggest and the one that you you know you may already use this. You know, most of us use Facebook every day. It's not hard to just click on the marketplace. I have gotten things off of, you know, the local sites like that and to resell. So those opportunities are out there. So um, the other thing I use is if you want to, you know, if you're into like buying storage auctions, um, like you see on Storage Wars or something, if you want to go and buy storage auctions, um, the sites that I use are storagetreasures.com and auction zip. Dot com. So I will at the end of the, I will in the description I'll put basically I'll put the names of all these apps and websites that I use um, every day for eBay. So storage treasure dot uh, storage and auctionzip.com. That's basically the two sites I use for I do purchase storage units. You know people who don't pay their their bill. I go I bid I win storage units I clean them out and find stuff to sell on eBay from there too. That's another sourcing opportunity, especially now that we're into the colder months. The garage sale is, you know, there's some still. I actually went to two tonight, but there most of the garage sales are no longer going on in my area because it's cold. So you have to figure out other ways to source it. You can't, you, I mean, unless you have a, a really good area for thrifting for thrift stores, it's really hard to like just use thrift stores to, to build up your eBay. It's not impossible. It's hard. <clears throat> you have to have a very thrift store rich environment. Um, I do get a lot of stuff from thrift stores. I get, I would say most of my stuff from thrift stores, especially now the garage sale season's over, but it's not going to be enough to like sustain the, you know, if you want to, if you want to make this full time and you want to sell a lot, you're going to need to expand your, your, the places that you buy stuff from. So like I said, I do buy storage auctions, storage units, and those are the sites that I use. And the other thing, um, there are state, say a state sales, I would say is is another opportunity um, and church rummage sales. Now estate sales are hit or miss. I've I've some some estate sales I've gone to. I've you know found stuff and other ones I found nothing. The problem I find with estate sales are they can be kind of time time consuming if you want to get the best stuff. So estate sales are different um, uh, websites for that. I can't remember the what is the one that I use estatesalesnearme.com I think is it I'll put it again I'll put it in the description um, most estate sale companies you know they'll have a listing they'll show all the pictures people will be looking at these pictures and see things that they want and those are the things that'll go pretty quick to get these things you have to be there early most estate sale companies do like a number system where 
you know, they may start passing out numbers at eight, the estate sale starts at nine. They may let the first 15 people, numbers one through 15 in. To get number one through 15, you have to be there early. So it could be very time consuming. And even if, for instance, I just went to an estate sale, I was number six and there was a couple of items that I wanted, I didn't get in either. Because the five people in front of me went straight for those items and grabbed them. So even though I was the sixth, I spent a lot of time waiting around and getting the number and coming back and waiting some more. So they can be kind of time consuming estate sales and they can you know, they can be hit and miss. Some people do great. I watch YouTube videos where people do great at estate sales. I personally do not do very well at estate sales. That's why it's so far down on my list. Uh, and again, church rummage sales, kind of the same idea. Go to a church rummage sale. If it op doors open at nine, people start going there like waiting in line at 830. I've had some really good church rummage sales where they have just great prices and there's just tons of stuff to buy. And I've had some others that have been terrible. So most most church ramen sales are like Friday and Saturday, and that's like right in the middle of garage sale time, and they may open their doors at 9. You may have to get in line at 8.30 to get like a good spot in line so you actually get stuff. So you've basically, you know, you wait in line from 8.30 to 9, then you're in the, the ramen sale from 9 to 9.30. So in that hour block, you could have hit, in, you know, you know, 5 to 10 garage sales in that hour. If, you know, if they're, they're clustered up and you're really moving. You get a five or ten garage sales, so that's a lot more opportunity. So I don't really go to church sales too often, um, unless there's not, not a whole lot going on garage sale wise. But you can get some good stuff at church rummage sales. They're just kind of it's kind of at a bad time to be happening, and it usually is like an hour. You could if you go to one, you can pretty much put an hour down for you that you're going to spend at the sale. So, and then the other opportunity um, for sourcing is your friends and family. I've told you know lots of my friends and family, oh, what are you up to? What are you doing? Oh, I'm doing eBay. I, I buy stuff and then I resell it on eBay. And a lot of them have hit me up. Hey, man, I, you know, like my old boss was like, hey, I've got a bunch of video games you can maybe sell on eBay. You know, come and take a look at them. I bought them off him for pretty cheap and I'm reselling them on eBay, you know, as part of my business. And they, and they know, you know, so you, you tell your friends, you tell your family, you get the word out there. Hey, I'm into eBay. If you got old stuff at your house, just collect and dust. Let me come take a look at it. I'll purchase it off you, you know, as for, for my business. So friends and family. I don't do a whole lot of sourcing from friends and family, but it's definitely opportunities that have happened. So now you've started your eBay, you've gotten, you've built your feedback up. You've, you know, you found um, items to sell in your house. You've, you've started to build up a little bit of money. You started hitting up some thrift stores. You start buying some items. How do you know what items to buy? Like if you're like me, when I started eBay, I really only had knowledge in one or two categories and really not a whole bunch of knowledge. I knew some. So my, the categories I sell mostly in are electronics, video games, board games, toys. These are things that interest me. These are things, you know, categories that I, I know a little bit about. There are tons of categories. House goods, clothing, shoes. I mean, there's just so many categories. Where do you find, where do you find the information, you know, when you're, so you're, when you're out there, you know what to buy. That place is YouTube. I watched so many videos like the what sold on eBay videos. I watched tons and tons of those because those people are showing you exactly what they purchased, how much they purchased it for, how much they sold it for, why they purchased these items. So much information here on YouTube. That's the place that you're going to go. It's very important that you do a ton of research. So usually like what I'll do is so I go out thrifting all day and then I come home and I have a bunch of items. So I'll sit in my, in my office here and I'll clean these items, test it, start taking photos uh, for listings and things. So I have a monitor here. I also have a monitor over here. So I have two monitors. It may seem crazy. If you have a computer, get a second monitor. So what do I do? I sit here, I list on this monitor and then on this monitor, I have YouTube videos going of what's sold on eBay. You know, just people who are, you know, I watch tons of different YouTubers. And again, I'll, I'll put it in the description below. I'll put a bunch of links to other YouTubers that I watch who have tons of knowledge in different categories and have really helped me on my journey. Again, I'm still new. So I'm still new. But how did I get all the knowledge to know what to find out there? I just watch these videos. And when I'm out there, you know, it triggers something in my mind. If I see somebody, they say a name, you know, for instance, I went to a, a yard sale. And I just watched a video about someone who was really good with like clothes and shoes. And she said, oh, I picked up these Cole Hans. I never heard the name Cole Han before. No idea what it was, but I heard this in my mind, right? So I heard her say this and I kind of stored it away. 
So I was at a garage sale. Person had a big pile of stuff for a quarter a piece. I looked down, there were some shoes. I picked them up inside and said Cole Haan. I'm like, oh, these are Cole Haan's. I've heard this name before. I don't know anything about shoes, but I've heard this name before because I watched this video. Bought them for a quarter. And I think I ended up, I ended up selling those for 60 bucks. So I sold those shoes, absolutely no knowledge on shoes whatsoever. But I've, I've heard the name Cole Haan because I watch these videos. So it's very, very important that you do a ton of research. And you can do this while you're doing eBay. So you're working on eBay stuff, you're watching videos. <clears throat> you know, it's it's efficient. You know, you're still doing your work. You're, you're, you're getting knowledge at the same time. I, you know, it's it, like I said, it's very important to do a ton of research. And this is going to help you when you're out there. Because here's the thing about reselling. It's extremely competitive. I never noticed this, this, this before. And I would go to thrift stores and yard sales, you know, for fun sometimes. But... I never really noticed how many people are there reselling. And here's how you know. Go to, go to the thrift store and you'll notice this. Watch the people who are on their cell phones. If they're on their cell phones, good chance they're resellers because they're looking up prices. They have something in their hand. They're on their phone typing something. They're scanning it. Those are resellers. And you'd be surprised how many resellers go to the thrift stores every single day. It's extremely competitive. How do you get a leg up? Knowledge. That's how you get a leg up. I've had times where I've walked into a thrift store, middle of the afternoon, for instance, with the Sony, um, I just person purchased a Sony um, Walkman new in package from the 80s, it was on the shelf, there was a bunch of other resellers there that I see there all the time, they all walked right past it, they didn't know, like, you know, maybe they didn't see it, they didn't know that walk old Walkman sell, but because I've watched a ton of videos, I've done a ton of research, I knew this, I walked right up to it picked it up i bought that sony walkman for three dollars and i just sold it for 120 uh, plus shipping so because i had this knowledge i made myself a hundred dollars because of this knowledge while there were still a bunch of other resellers in the store if you're if your category is shoes and clothes and you know this stuff about you know you know a ton about this stuff it's imperative that you learn about other categories figure out what electronics sell figure, figure out what video games cost a bunch <coughs> It's very important to learn. Figure out what house goods, you know, house goods sell what, you know, they're like sunbeam mixers and, you know, different kitchen appliances that are very expensive. Just figure it out. Do a ton of research right here on YouTube. You can do all this. You can learn all this stuff right here on YouTube. And like I said, I'll link a bunch of different YouTubers that I've watched in the past There's that help me every single day and what I've learned the most from these guys. So, important. Watch a bunch of YouTube videos and do a bunch of research. This will give you a leg up over your competition. So the other thing is work hard. This is your business. You absolutely can do reselling full time. You absolutely can. Absolutely. I'm telling you, I am somebody who had no knowledge of eBay reselling whatsoever. I was able to quit my nine to five, my, you know, job that I went to, to college for and got a degree, I was able to quit that and I'm, I make more money than I did bef than I did doing that full time. Work hard, stay motivated. You got to hold yourself accountable. Here's the thing. You, you can get rid of that nine to five. Here's the, the beautiful thing about eBay, which I talked about this in my pros and cons video, but what I love about eBay is you're your own boss. You're your own boss. You're making your own money. You don't have to split it with anybody unless you're married. I mean, you, you know, the, this is your money, right? You know, when after it's all said and done, after you pay your fees, you pay your shipping, you get your final profit, you give your tax percentage to the government, that's your money. You don't have to give that to somebody else and then they give you a little bit back like a normal nine to five where you're busting your butt from nine to five for a year. Come a raise time, you get a year. You get a raise. You get a dollar raise. woo -hoo. The beautiful thing about eBay, the more work you put into it, the more time you put into it, the more money you can make. You absolutely see those that return on investment. You're investing your time. You see that return. You absolutely, I'm telling you, you absolutely can do this full time. If you're working a nine to five, do this part time. When you get off work at five, have a, th have a thrift store route that you go to. From five, you know, most thrift stores close around me around eight o'clock. So you have three hours. It, it's going to make for a long day. You're going to be out from nine, you know, working from nine to five, get off work, <clears throat> go spend an hour at the thrift store, spend two hours at the thrift store, come back home, do a few listings on eBay. You absolutely can turn, you know, a part-time eBay work, you know, part-time eBay into full-time eBay. You'll start ramping up. You'll start saying, man, I'm making a lot of money on eBay. If only I had more time to spend on it, 
I could maybe I could I could make even more. It's absolutely possible. And you can absolutely quit that nine to five. Stop working for somebody else, busting your butt for somebody else to have the nice house, the nice cars, you know, the vacations. You don't need to do that. You absolutely can sell on eBay full time and make your own money and be your own boss and do, and do it and do anything you want. The only limiting factor I would say is finding enough stuff to sell. In my mind, that's what I feel like limits me. I can only sell what I can find. So that's what's going to limit me is if I can't find enough stuff to sell. Because if I can find it, I can absolutely sell it. The other thing is you can only do so much work. Now I, I do, I will say that eBay is going to, you're going to put a lot more work into eBay than your nine to five. The beautiful thing about a nine to five, once five o'clock hits, you're down for the day. It's pretty much done for the day, right? You're going to get your Saturday and Sunday off to relax. The thing about eBay is it's it takes a lot of work. It's a lot of work. For me, eBay is a seven-day-a-week job. I think about eBay. I work on eBay every single day. But the beautiful thing is I'm working for myself. I'm putting this time into myself. I'm not working seven days a week for somebody else. I'm not working five days a week for somebody else. It's a lot of time. You're going to put a lot more hours into eBay if you do it full-time than your normal job. But you can absolutely make more money. And really, the, the sky's the limit. How much stuff can you find and sell? How much work can you do? How work hard can you work? That's going to be your limiting factors. And if you can work hard, stay motivated, keep yourself accountable because you're going to be working for yourself. Every day you have to get up. Every day you have to go to the, the thrift stores, garage sales. You're going to have one day. There's going to be days when you take, you know, maybe you don't go so hard. Some, you know, maybe you're not out from 830 in the morning until 3 o'clock in the afternoon, coming back, doing listings until 9, 10, 11 o'clock at night, and then going to bed and doing it all over. Maybe there are days where you, you know, relax a little bit. But you have to work on eBay every single day. eBay never closes. eBay's open 24 hours a day. I love that. eBay's open 24 hours a day. You can make money while you sleep. I love that. I always wake up. So I love waking up and having like a sale or two. Like I just slept for six, seven hours and I made $100, made $200 while I was sleeping. That's awesome. So do these things. So now, on to the, mo the uh, in my opinion, the hardest part of eBay. So you've, you've started your account. Let's recap. You've started your account. You've, you made your new account, you made a PayPal, you made an email, email, new email, you've branded your, you know, you've got your own eBay brand, you've, you know, you've found places to source, you found stuff to, to buy, you know, you've, you've started listing on eBay, you're making some sales, that's awesome, you've watched a bunch of YouTube videos, you're learning about different categories, you're learning what sells, you're working hard, you're getting after it, now things are starting to sell, what now? Now you got to ship the stuff. And this, again, is the hardest, in my opinion, the hardest part of eBay and the part where you can lose, in my opinion, the most money you can lose is on shipping. It's very important you figure out how shipping works because it can be confusing. It really can. The most important thing is go on YouTube. Again, go on YouTube. Look up videos. How does the shipping work? So the most of the time you're going to be using the USPS um United States Postal Service, if you're in the United States, you're going to be using that as your ship main shipping um, program. So it's important to learn how their shipping costs work. You know, how, you know, out, literally ounces can cost you money. If, if you're off by ounces on things, it can cost you money. So watch YouTube videos. There's a ton of videos out there explaining how shipping works, you know, what priority mail is, what first class mail is, how to get the most out of your shipping. It's very important. <clears throat> that you learn about shipping and how to, how it works and you will watch these videos and you will still not know what's going on and I start there are times I know that I can be more efficient in my shipping and I could probably make even more money if I was more efficient in my shipping so that's still that's still something that I'm working on so we're gonna learn about we're gonna learn about how to ship on e we're gonna watch YouTube videos and we're gonna learn how to do that the other thing is you gotta have shipping supplies you gotta have boxes you gotta have bubble wrap packing paper peanuts poly mailers, you know, where do you get this stuff at? The one place that you can get it from is USPS.com. The United States Postal Service will give you free boxes, give you free poly bags. Let me show you how to get there. So you're going to go on USPS.com. You're going to create an account using your, e you know, you're going to use your eBay name. You're going to use your eBay email. That's all going to be its own thing. And then you're going to go over here to mail and ship as a mail ship. No, uh, Postal, postal store, that's where we're at. So we're going to go here to Postal Store. We're going to go to Shipping Supplies. You can get free boxes from USPS. And I'll show you the ones that I use the most. 
that will help you. So some that you may use are like medium, like, like flat rate boxes. Basically a flat rate box is if it fits, it ships and it has a one flat rate. So it could be 70 pounds. If you could fit it into this medium flat rate box, you can ship it for $12 or something, whatever the price may be. So I use those some, but I don't use those very much. The ones that I use the most of are just regular mailing boxes. So let's see, there's a large flat rate boxes, regional boxes, regional boxes are something you're gonna use also. Mailing box, so what you'll wanna look for is a box that says priority mail, and then it'll say mailing box. Large mailing box, regular mailing box, poly mailers, things like that. So that's what you're gonna look for are ones that say mailing box, not medium flat rate boxes. You can see here, medium flat rate box, not regional boxes, mailing boxes are the ones that I use the most. And I use the mo the one that I use the most of the mailing boxes is the large mailing box. I don't know exactly where it's at, but the large mailing box I use the most, the regular mailing box I use the most. Here's the problem is they're only a certain size, right? So there's, they don't, you know, they're good for smaller things, but if you have odd shaped items or larger items, that's where you're going to need to know where to get, you know, you're going to have to figure out where you can get other boxes from, whether that be from companies that throw them away and you work out some deal with them or you can come pick them up. For me, that's a hospital. I worked at a hospital. I worked out a deal where I can come and pick up uh, packing supplies and boxes from the hospital. You know, whatever, you know, if you have a friend or something that runs a business where they get a lot of boxes that they normally just throw in the dumpster, maybe you can talk to them. Maybe they can set them aside for you. Maybe they'll let you just go get them out of the dumpster whatever it may be. So it's important to know where to get uh, shipping supplies, especially in a pinch. Um, if you get an order for some big item, you don't have a box to fit, where do you get a box? The places I usually go, and it's not the, it's the worst place to go is like office supply stores, but you need a box, you're in a pinch, you need to get a box. So it's important to know where to get these from quickly because you're gonna have to ship this stuff out. So um, know where to get shipping supplies, uh, the other kind, of, the kind of, other kind of cool thing is, you know, you're built. You want to build up ten feedback. You can start buying, sh uh, purchasing shipping supplies off eBay. Um, eBay has a great place for shipping supplies. These are uh, some of the things that I buy. You know, a shipping supply that I use off eBay all the time is this little pilot, little bubble mailer. It's great for video games, small items, remote control. It's a lot of remotes, sell a lot of video games. This is great. Purchase these off eBay. So you're trying to build up ten feedback. You can buy shipping supplies. The other um, thing that you'll want to get also, very important, a few items that I use every day, and it's very important that you have have these items. You're gonna so you're gonna be selling lots of stuff. I sell four to five items a day, so I use my shipping supply stuff all the time. It's important. Get a tape gun. Tape gun, very important. Get decent tape. Um, I haven't really figured out the best place to buy tape yet. I buy it from like Home Depot or Lowe's or some like Scotch heavy duty shipping tape. I use that a lot. It's probably not the best um, option money wise, but it works. It's about I don't know a dollar something a roll. But important get it get a, a tape gun. I use that every single day. Um, the other thing I use every day box knife. Very important. Get yourself a box knife. Use that all the time. Tape measure. Get yourself a tape measure. Um, you're gonna need to, to to size you know how big is your box you're gonna need to put that information into your shipping the other thing that I get is um, the other thing I use a lot this is a box resizer so I, like I said I get boxes they're not always the right size sometimes they're too big maybe they're the right size one way but not the other way box resizer and there's a that's there are some that combine these two tools you can get an item you know a, a box cutter and a box resizer in one tool I would say that's more efficient. I already had a, a box knife, so I just bought a box resizer. So important, box resizer, you'll use that quite a bit, and a box knife. And like I said, there's places where you can get on eBay, both of those combined. The other thing that I use a lot, fragile stickers. I use fragile stickers on my boxes a lot because I can tell you firsthand that things don't get handled with very much care. So I, I hope that if, if a postman sees fragile that they may not throw it or kick it. It doesn't mean they're not going to, but I hope that it works. But you can write fragile, obviously you can, you know, not you can skip the stickers and write fragile on there, especially when you first start out because you're not you know, you may ship I think when I first started my first month, 
I was getting maybe just like one sale every three or four days. If it was fragile, you can just write it on there. Now when you're to the point where you're selling four or five items a day, maybe four of those items are fragile. Writing fragile on the on the boxes over and over again can get, and I got really bad handwriting. It's not very professional. Get yourself some fragile stickers. They're very cheap on, on eBay. Again, feedback builder. Need 10 feedback? Go buy yourself some some fragile stickers. Buy yourself some, some shipping tape. Buy yourself a tape gun. Buy yourself a box knife. Buy yourself a box resizer. Buy yourself, heck, if you don't have a tape measure, buy yourself a tape measure off eBay. Build feedback. <clears throat> and the most, most important, I would say the most important thing to buy, get yourself a decent scale. Get yourself a decent scale. I got this. Facebook Marketplace, this weighs up, uh, can, can do up to 86 pounds. So you can put up to 86 pounds on here. I got this off of Facebook Marketplace for $10, I think. You know, look around, get yourself a decent scale. I was using before this, and then business started to ramp up. I was using like a food scale for my kitchen. And I was like, this is not gonna work. Uh, I, I gotta have a decent scale because this, this will save you money. Like I said, ounces cost you, if you're off by ounces, I have been off by ounces, and in the post office will will weigh that. If you put that it's nine ounces and it's really fifteen ounces, they will put fifteen ounces on there, and they will send you a bill for the cost difference. I've gotten bills for for a dollar before, you know, where they send me a message: "Hey, you've been, you know, your your PayPal's been docked a dollar because you on this item you put that it weighed nine ounces, and we had it weighing fifteen ounces." Get yourself a good scale; it will save you money. Like I said. Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist offer up, let go. You can find one of these for cheap. Ten bucks is what I paid for that. So, very important. Get yourself a decent scale. So, I guess to kind of sum this all up, to kind of wrap, put a nice bow on this. Remember, this is your business. Treat it that way. If you're tired, I was, I was just, I was tired of going to work nine to five, working for somebody else. Like I said, so I stopped. I started doing this full time. This is my business, okay? This is my business. Keep that in mind. You're gonna be dealing with every person that purchases from you and doesn't purchase from you. Those are your customers. Just like if you go into any other retail store, you're a customer there. That's how you gotta treat eBay. This is your store. This, when they come to this page, this is my store. This is like them walking into my brick and mortar store and here I am to greet them. Let's greet them with a nice, you know, message about your store. Let's let's greet them with nice graphics, something to keep them there. You're they're going to be be available to your customers. They're going to ask questions. If you have items, they're going to ask questions about these items. You know, answer them as quick as possible. If you're out sourcing and you don't have time to answer the question, just send them a quick message. Say, hey, I'm out right now. When I get home, I don't have the item in front of me. When I get home, I'll be more than happy to answer the question. Send them a message back. These are your customers. That can make or break your store. That can make or break your eBay account. Those will make sales. I've had people message me and say, because you answered back so quickly, I found one for a little cheaper, but I liked your customer service. I'm going to purchase this from you. I've had those messages before. You'll get feedback. Fast shipping. Great communication. Because you answered questions. You got the items out to them quickly. Remember, these are your customers. This is your business. Work hard. Stay motivated. Hold yourself accountable. You absolutely can make eBay a full-time thing for you. Make eBay a reliable income for you. So, that being said, hopefully you guys found some information, found something that you can use. If you're a new seller, if you're an experienced seller, maybe there was something for you. I, I can almost guarantee that I forgot stuff. I tried to get as much in as I could. I didn't want this to be, I don't know how long this video has been going on for. I didn't want it to be like an hour long. So, if you have questions about anything, comments, comment down below. I will answer every single one of them to the best of my ability. If you're a seasoned seller and you, you, you see something you can add, absolutely put those into the comments. If you're a new seller, check those comments. I'm hoping that some of my, you know, my friends who watch these videos who are seasoned resellers can chime in, you know, add things to the conversation. I want to, I want to start a conversation in the comments, you know, again, Hopefully you found some information here. I tried my best to kind of put it in a order to where it makes sense. And again, if you have questions, put it in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them for you. So again, thank you for watching the video and I appreciate your time and have a great day and good luck out there. Good luck.